Welcome to CBS Sports HQ. I'm Amanda Guerra along with Ryan Wilson, Pete Prisco, Brady Quinn here on set. Look, the draft is done. We are far from finished. In fact, Pete is doing the most work out of all of us. He is handing out draft grades, and you can see it on CBSSports.com right now. We are going to go through each team and the grade that Pete gave them. Uh, we're going to start with the highest grades, okay. and then we're going to move down. So let's start with the Ravens, Pete. The lone A+. Plus out of all of the teams, tell us why you gave the Ravens an A+. Plus. Eric DaCosta knocked it out of the park. I mean, he, he absolutely uh, owned this draft from top to bottom. And people will say he should have drafted a wide receiver, and maybe he should have in the sixth round, I mean, in the fourth round. But the reality is he picks the best possible football player, and they did a great job with it. They started in the first round. I didn't love Kyle Hamilton as much as most people, but I love their second round, their other second first round pick, Tyler Linderbaum, the center. He will be in front of Lamar Jackson for a long, long time. David Ajaba, when he's healthy, wow. But Linderbaum was the best pick. But top to bottom, this was the best draft of the entire weekend. A plus. Yeah, it was good. You're, you're exactly right, Pete. And, and it sounds like the Ravens had a lot of fun. Not quite as much fun as you had in Vegas by the sound of your voice there. I'm not sure you got up to, but I'm glad you're back home <laughs> safe and sound. Uh, <laughs> listen, we, we worked the draft till 10 p.m. and then Pete disappeared till 8 the next morning. You do the math. But in terms of what the Ravens did, I, I thought I think yeah. Pete's right. The questions are about the wide receiver, but uh, other than that, they got some tight ends. They got Charlie Kohler, who's a really good player out of state. They got Isaiah Likely out of Coastal Carolina, who's a really good run blocker. They can also add in the pass game. And they even got a punter, Jordan Stout, the best punter in this draft class, not named Matt Ariza. He ended up going before Matt Ariza. But uh, to Pete's point, uh, the, the Ravens do this each and every year. This team is a lot better, even if Lamar Jackson didn't seem super excited, at least in the first round, about how things unfolded. Three's company here because I love their draft. I mean, you look at top to bottom, every single one of these players will be an impact player in, in some fashion or form. They're either going to be a starter or they're going to provide depth and some value there. And I think there might be some concerns from Ravens fans because you trade away Hollywood Brown, you're like, okay, remember we're going to draft a guy who's going to be a wide receiver for us. Not necessarily the case, but they're going to get two tight ends that I love and Charlie Kohler who can use in that fashion. Split them out wide, play more of your traditional wide tight end, and Isaiah likely as well. Uh, running backs too. I mean, uh, Tyler Beatty from Missouri doesn't get enough credit. He's small in size, but this dude can hit some home runs. Led the SEC last year in the 10-plus runs uh, throughout the course of the season. So they've got some gems up and down their draft class. Absolutely loved it. That's one of the reasons why the Baltimore Ravens are always in the hunt. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.